it was extremely intense, and not only because of the ENM, but also because of the fact that I became a professor in nuclear medicine in Rotterdam in the same period. So I had to pay attention to ENM and my new department of nuclear medicine, and that was a lot. There were days that I could only work for my department, you know, and days that I could only work for the ENM. So it, it, it always gave the feeling that I was neglecting the other one. And uh, there were periods uh, in the last two years that I had, had, had a feeling that I could have done better if I had m more time. But for, for the rest, uh, it was very rewarding because we achieved a lot. And the, the major feeling I have is that we have a, a very good board. We, we are working together, we are communicating, and our meetings are long but very fruitful because everyone has ideas, has visions, and the atmosphere we're working in is, is very, uh, very professional in the sense that we can listen to each other and everyone has its input and, and we bring that all together. And that, uh, that is something uh, I, I, uh, every, every board needs to have uh, this way of communication. The feeling I will have by the end of, uh, of this year is very positive. My main area of research was uh, nuclear cardiology, cardiac diseases or imaging of cardiac diseases until I went to this new hospital and uh, in that hospital oncology is, is the main area of interest and now I gradually switched from cardiology to, to uh, oncology especially in the field of prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. I'm very interested in techniques to diagnose, uh, to find ways to uh, follow up patients during treatment but also in very new ways of treatment using radionuclides. Uh, what I see is that uh, young nuclear physicians, nuclear phys physicists and pharmacists are very dedicated, have uh, brilliant ideas and we need to find ways to combine their visions and their enthusiasm into our experience and uh, there's absolutely no discussion about the fact that we need that, absolutely. I think because uh, nuclear medicine currently is in a, in a transitional phase. We are working together with the radiology departments and we combine our equipment with radiology machines, combinations we call hybrid imaging. And there is so much new in this field and so much new possibilities that is very stimulating. And I can imagine that when you're young and you may have to make a choice, then and, and you see this field of molecular imaging, there's a lot of preclinical imaging. There are the possibilities to, to become an imager, not only in nuclear medicine, but also in CT and MRI. That's, that's beautiful. If you um, take a look at the, well, the average radiologist who is working in his department, uh, uh, sitting before his computer, that is not what we want. We want clinically interested uh, physicians, not only looking at images but also at the patient, listening to the patient and deciding what approach is the best one. Nuclear medicine was always very strong in trying to combine imaging with clinical work. Go to the patient and, and, and listen and pay your attention to the complaints and the feeling of being ill of the patient, absolutely, and in uh, uh, that respect is a very good question. Combine being clinical with being a very good imager. Very important because um, we are able to, uh, to quantify what we see on our images. If you take for instance PET-CT, we are always able to quantify the amount of uptake which is a marker of the uh, activity, of the intensity of the process of the disease in the patient's body. And it is unique for imaging. Nuclear medicine in, in, in that, uh, that respect is, is, is strong and we need to stimulate that. We did that within our URL organization because uh, there's uh, accreditation but also quantitation. And um, when, you, when, you, when you work according to that lines, you have a very, uh, very um, strong department and you can participate in major research studies, clinical studies. Things have improved since the clinical trials directive was accepted by the EU and by the European Parliament. Uh, for the first time, radiopharmaceuticals were recognized as medicine 
uh, with different with different properties. They have a very short half life and uh, uh, side effects are hardly noted. So this this gives us much more possibilities in the in the field of of research drugs which have not uh, been sent for marketing authorization. Much more freedom to develop. Uh, new drugs and use them in research circumstances. Absolutely terrible because you know that the future, that your future will be extremely difficult and that you will lose your contact with your family, your relations, uh, even the, the world around you. What we hope with the work we're doing that we are able to diagnose Alzheimer in a much earlier stage. We have the compounds to diagnose Alzheimer's but um, we need to find the best situations to perform these kind of studies because they are expensive. And even more on, on top of that, we need uh, to find treatments. And if there are uh, treatments available, then we have the right uh, equipment and radiopharmaceuticals to, uh, to evaluate whether they are really uh, effective. We can make scans before treatment, during follow-up, and, uh, and uh, we are able to image the, 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 the process of, of, uh, of dementia in these cases. And if these drugs are effective, then we can see that the process is, is stopped. There, there are a lot of cutbacks. And um, also in my department, we have a lot of trouble to find the, 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 the funding uh, to perform our, our, our studies, preclinical and clinical. And it, is, and it is really a pity. So we are all fighting over Europe uh, to, to get funding from Horizon 2020 and um, because so many institutions are fighting about, uh, about this funding um, we are in the situation that we need to find different, different ways to fund this. My major advice is um, there is a lot going on within the ENM and uh, you receive more than 40 emails a day about issues going on. And as a president, you're not able to be part of all this. Absolutely impossible. So try to find your ways in uh, issues which, which are for you really important and where you feel comfortable in. And for the rest, the, the rest of the board will work on this. And if it's not working in the beginning, find the right persons to, to take over and only ask to be uh, in CC or to be uh, informed what's going on. It's absolutely impossible to be, to be part of all what's going on. When I go back to, uh, to when I was 20 or so, I, may, I had to make a choice what I wanted to go to, uh, to, uh, to study. Uh, medicine and architecture were, were my, my uh, major choices. And it is a little bit sad to say that uh, I went to medicine because one of my uncles was prepared to pay for my studies. My parents were not. And it, it, is, it sounds sad, but it isn't, because uh, I'm quite enthusiastic about many, many uh, specialties w within medicine. When I finished uh, medicine, uh, medical school, I had a choice between internal medicine, psychiatry, pediatrics, and, and, uh, and uh, now nuclear medicine came later, after I finished in internal medicine. But it's, it's the way life uh, evolves. Uh, you, there is an opportunity and if you like it, step into it. And um, if you are enthusiastic and like the work, well, then the rest will come. Two highlights, that is, become a professor in Rotterdam and become president of the ENM. Career-wise, the major highlight in my life is my family.